you're watching the Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Isn't that a good thing? That we can walk by faith and not based on what we see, feel, or hear. No matter what the circumstance or situation or the impossibilities or the adversities we face in life, we can still live by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we've been talking about taking the lid off or the limits off of our life. You know, I remember the story of Chuck Yeager when he broke the sound barrier. He flew in, I think they call it the X-Wing, down in Lancaster, California area, Edwards Air Force Base. And, uh, you know, when he was, uh, a number of guys had died trying to accomplish what he did and uh, trying to break the sound barrier, which is pretty fast. And uh, I forget the exact speed it is, but anyway, he's, he, he described as that plane shaking and then rattling and it, it, uh, uh, it just was almost like the thing's going to fall apart. Finally, he gained the speed, broke the sound barrier, and then when he did, he said it was like he was floating on, on, on glass. I, or it, it was just so smooth, and, uh, and everything changed. You know, everything changed in, in, in the earth when that happened. You know, whenever he broke that barrier, then others found out they could do it also. And it was other people followed up behind him and went even faster than he did. You know, I remember I used to run uh, the mile in, in uh, grade school and high school, and I ran the two mile uh, cross country. And, uh, and you know, I, I wasn't the fastest runner or the best on my team, but at least I was in the middle of the pack and I helped the team win some some meets, amen. We even wrestled against McFarland, or not wrestled, well, we wrestled too, I was on the wrestling team. But we, we would wipe out McFarland, but that was before they their heyday, amen. And uh, so anyway, uh, I remember hearing a story about somebody who broke the four minute mile. And, uh, and everybody would talk about it, made big news, four minutes. I mean, that's cooking, man. When you run faster than four minutes, that's a full out sprint. And uh, that's just, that's amazing. But before that, everybody's thinking was, can't do it. It's impossible. Same thing with Chuck Yeager. Uh, it just it just can't be done. And uh, but it was done. And once it was done, then everybody goes, "Well, if he can do it, I can do it." Well, I thank God that He sent His Son and He broke all the barriers for us. That we don't have to have limited thinking. We don't have to be limited in life. Uh, that we can face what looks like impossibilities, and yet uh, they're, not, they're not impossible because he broke the limits. He broke the barriers for us. Amen? Hallelujah. And that's good news. That's why it's called good news. The gospel is good news. He, he broke the chains and the, the, the strongholds and, and brought breakthrough in our life, and we can experience that every day. We don't have to be bound to impossibility impossibility thinking, meaning, uh, you know, we just can't break that barrier. If we stay in the realm, if we stay in the realm of uh, the flesh and we stay and try to do things mentality wise, you know, we're always dealing with our uh, flesh realm, trying to accomplish the impossible, uh, in the realm of the flesh and being heady about things, uh, we just beat our heads against the wall. But when we tap into God's power through His Son, we can break barriers we never thought we could. We can live a life that we never thought we could. And it all starts with us renewing our mind to what to what God wants us to to have and live. And and uh, because you know the the flesh deals with the, you know, the mind uh, with education and, and natural knowledge. 
uh, you know, our, our spirit deals with the realm of the spirit. And we can tap into the realm of the spirit and not be spooky about it. And I know some spooky people, <laughs> you know, they thought they're so spiritual and uh, they became no earthly good. But we can tap into a, a realm uh, by faith. And I was talking with about our last broadcast. When we get into the word of God, which is the power of God, and we drive it deep in our spirit and we release that same force called faith, because that's what it produces. The Word of God produces faith, and faith is a force that can be spoken and released by what we say, words, then God can do what He wanted to do in the first place. And, and, and true faith speaks the Word and speaks the Word only. Amen. It will only say what the Word says. Amen. Faith speaks only what the Word says. Faith speaks what it believes. So if you, if you change what you believe by uh, uh, changing your, your thought life, renewing your mind, and driving the, what is, the word is a spiritual force, basically, that produces a spiritual force called faith. And, uh, and then, you can, then you can live it. Then you can walk it out. So I want you to look at this with me, James uh, chapter 2, verse, verse 17, through James, the book of James, uh, chapter 2, and we'll start with verse 17 down to 22. It says, so also faith by itself, it is, uh, no, I'm in the wrong translation, excuse me. Let me go back to a different, to King James why it didn't sound right. Even so, if it has not works, it is dead, being alone. He's talking about faith. Yea, a man uh, may say, thou has faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith, and I'll show you my works. And I will show thee my faith by my works meaning faith gets results it's not just standing around saying i have faith i have faith well most people go around saying i have faith they've never released it because they don't know how and then the next step is walking it the walk of faith you know there's a message called how to walk by faith that means corresponding actions the weymouth translation says it that way that we walk by faith, or have corresponding actions to our faith. Amen. So it's not just talking, but it's walking. Amen. What we say. It says in verse 18, yea, or no, verse 19, I'm sorry. The, thou believest that there is one God, thou does well, the devil also believes and trembles. Meaning you believe in God, well, so does the devil. It says, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that, that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. It says, so, uh, verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac? his son upon the altar. Verse 22, Seeth thou, O faith, wrought with his works, or done with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Now I'm going to read that last uh, phrase, or the last verse, verse 22, in the uh, living. It says, You see his faith, talking about Abraham's faith. You see his faith and his actions work together. His faith and his actions work together. His actions made his faith complete. Do I need to say any more than that? <laughs> no, I don't, but let's go ahead. We got a, a, some more time here. <laughs> Amen. But is that any more plain? Uh, your faith is incomplete without your actions of faith. So what does that mean? Well, after you have 
got the word, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm just going to keep it simple. The word of God in itself is the power of God. And the word is, is like a seed. In, inside of that seed is the power to produce. If I have a tomato seed and I plant that tomato seed into the ground, it's very tiny. I put it in the ground, it's going to produce tomatoes. Amen. Or any other seed. If it's an orange seed, apple seed, you know, uh, a watermelon seed, it's going to produce what it, it, what it is. It has the power inside of that seed to produce and recreate what it is. That's what the Word of God is. It, it is like, the Bible says, it's likened unto a seed. And when it's planted into a good ground, meaning the heart, there, there will be some type of manifestation. Now, in, in Mark 4, uh, it talks about that very thing, and starting with verse 13, but at, there's four types of ground. The last ground is a good ground, meaning the heart of man is a production center. And when you put the seed in there, which will always produce what it is. Amen. What is it? Well, uh, Romans 1, 16 says the word of God is the power of God. Now, unto salvation, uh, some people think that just means being saved. It doesn't just mean saved. It means redemption, uh, preservation. Uh, it means wholeness. It means prosperity. So, so salvation, paraclete, in the Greek, or sozo, means the very nature of God, the very things of God. It, 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 and so whatever, when Jesus was sown as a seed into the earth, a perfect seed, it produced a perfect harvest called mankind who can be born again and be just like Jesus. See, the seed carries the power to create what it is. Or the seed, the Word of God, has the power to produce something called faith. And faith is a creative force. Amen. It is a created substance that will create what it is. What is it? It's power. Faith is power when it's released will change natural circumstances. Will change a sick body to be in whole. Will, will change a, a, a destroyed mind to be complete. Amen. You may be, drink all your life and destroyed parts of your body and your brain or drugs drugged out and I've seen people that they just become crazy. They don't think right. Something's wrong in their brain. Brain cells were burned out that should have been there. And when the word is commanded in them to be whole, to be healed, there's, there's a transformation that takes place in their brain. Brain cells become recreated. Why? Because that's power. The word of God is power. And when it's released by Faith, which is a force or power, it creates something or it puts a demand on something from heaven. Heaven, it, it divinely connects us. It's, it connects us. It's how we do business with God to a realm of the spirit of heaven because we're seated in heavenly places and we get the power from heaven to change the very things on earth that need to be changed. <laughs> it's that simple. And so uh, faith, once it's released and spoken, once the force of heaven is released towards that, we may not see that because it may be a process. Uh, it could be an, an immediate work. But either way, we're to act as though it's done. That's what, that's what James is talking about. Uh, his actions, what actions? Of faith. Amen. His actions of faith are made, uh, has made his faith complete. Your actions of faith make your faith complete. Your actions of faith, your actions of acting on the word, talking the word as though it's already done, 
makes your faith complete. Not when you have the answer manifested. No, it's when your faith does something. It's called works. You, it's called corresponding actions. Corresponding actions makes faith perfect, mature, or complete. That's what that means. Let me read that again. James chapter 2, verse 22. You see his faith and his actions work together. Why? His actions made his faith complete. I'll read this in the uh, Passion Translation just to see what it says. It says, can't you see how his actions, meaning the man of faith, uh, which was Abraham, when God told him, go sacrifice your son, he didn't say, well, I received that by faith. No, he went and did. It was actions of faith. So it says, can't you see how his actions of faith co cooperated with his faith, and by his actions, faith found its full expression? That's pretty good. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So we can say this many, many ways, but faith without corresponding actions is not going to get results. It's not going to be complete. You're not going to have full expression of what you said or what you called. The Bible says God called those things that be not as though they were. So we can call the impossible and, and, and it's God to do the rest. It's his responsibility to do the rest. So we need to come to a place where we, there's no more argument, no more uh, fighting, because we already fought the good fight of faith because we win. So what fight is, is it? Rest. Rest. Uh, our only fight is to fight for rest, meaning faith can take you to a place of rest. Uh, meaning you know that you know. You know, just like you you know you got born again. Uh, somebody asks you, are you born again? Yeah. Do you, how do you know? Well, it's because I know. Well, what, what, what? I don't believe that. Well, it don't matter if you believe it. I know. I know with my knower. Well, how did you know? Well, the Word of God said so. And, he, and, and then he verified it. Uh, brought evidence to that by way the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me. See, he he uh, bear witness. That's a word. It's, uh, you know, the Bible talks about in Romans 8, 16. He bear witness in my spirit. I know with my knower. The only other way I can say anything else is just maybe praying in tongues and interpret it. I, I just know with my knower that I know I'm born again. Well, you can have the same expression, full expression of what you prayed for, what you called for, and what you stand for in any other area of your life. Because you tapped into the realm, uh, you know, of, uh, of heaven. In a realm that is bigger than any other realm in this earth. The realm that you see in the natural realm was created by the spiritual realm. So therefore, it supersedes everything. Uh, in power, in ability. And so, but... Nothing happens unless we release our faith in words and then act as though it's done and rest in it. Rest that it's complete. So if somebody asks you, well, how how you doing? You know, you still look sick. No, I'm resting in my healing. I heard testimony just minutes ago before we did this broadcast. Uh, somebody who had got victory over cancer, you know, a doctor said, hey, we see something else. We need to talk about this. And uh, let's do some tests. They did tests. And, but before the test results came out, this person said, ah, that don't matter. I'm healed. Glory to God. Well, that, that, was, that was not just faith talking. That was faith resting. I know what I know her, man. I don't care. Even if it did come in a report other than what I believe in, it don't matter because I'm resting in full health. See, that's weird to fight the good fight of faith and what's so good about it, we win and you can rest in your championship. You can rest in your victory. You can rest knowing that God's going to take care of it. And that's the realm of trust. When we truly trust God and trust in his word.
So faith acts as though it's done. It has corresponding actions. And then it steps into a realm of rest. You say, well, Pastor, how, wh wh okay, what do you mean, act like it's done? Uh, it's like dress rehearsal. You ever watch a big production, maybe on TV, and they do dress rehearsal, meaning they dress as though the crowd is there, the whole uh, production, they go through it from point A to point B, and everything's done without any interruptions. They just, they just act as though this is the main event. Well, that's what, that's what faith does. That's corresponding action. But also the, the, the completeness of that is resting. <laughs> well, the doctor said this, the lawyer said this, uh, this person said this. It don't matter what they say. I have corresponding actions, and I'm resting in what I said. Uh, the Word is the final authority, uh, and I prayed the Word. I prayed what God said. I believe what He said is true, and I'm resting in that. <laughs> the devil, he looks, he don't understand this because he's never operated in faith like this. He don't know this. He wasn't created to rule and reign like you and I on this earth. Uh, he he doesn't he don't understand this. <clears throat> it's beyond his compre comprehension, and uh, his little infinite finite mind can't pick this up. <laughs> if he could have, he he wouldn't have crucified the Lord if he'd known that all all that authority and power that was taken from him, that crown of glory and honor was given back to us. He would have never done that. So when he sees that we rest in our authority, we rest in what God's done for us and His Word. He don't understand that, and that's and, and he he can't beat that, he can't defeat that, and I'll tell you that's the place we need to end up. When we face face things and we pray for things and we believe that we receive, then we just the end results the completeness of that, as it says in the the New Living Translation, it, it says his actions made his faith complete. His actions act as though it's already done. Corresponding actions. It's more than just saying it, more than just hearing it and releasing, but it's acting. Corresponding actions. Amen? So you can understand in Hebrews chapter 1, verse uh, 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's all the evidence I need. The Word of God is all the evidence I need. Uh, the word working in me and releasing my faith, that's, a, that's all I need. Once I release my words, it's done. And I have it now. I, and then you go around acting as though it is. And you don't have to go around acting that for unbelievers. You don't have to go talking to some people who don't have faith like you. And, and, and uh, you don't have to defend that. The word defends it. The Holy Spirit defends it. God himself defends that. So... Uh, you, you know, you, you can go around talking it. You don't have to tell people. Uh, sometimes when God says to say something, then you say it because it's going to help somebody else see the end results of your faith. That's what Paul said. He said, follow the end results of my faith. And uh, uh, meaning you see the results. And, and that's the kind of life you can live. Like I did, you can. And, uh, and so sometimes it's, it's a testimony for others. And God will have us say things in, in front of people that it looks impossible, looks like it never happened. But once they see that our faith is working and, and we're in resting in that great work and they see it, they see what we already saw in our spirit, our production center, it produces faith. That manifestation, excuse me, I seen in here first. I called it out loud. People may have looked at me you're cross, cross sided man. You're crazy, you know. But the end results, it's there. Amen. The goods are there. <laughs> and then they go, wow. I guess he 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 is a man of faith. You know, I had I, I had uh, they were leaders and they were part of our board of our, uh, another ministry we had and and they they saw how we live by faith faith and they said, boy, I guess you guys do live by faith. I looked at them like, 
and you don't, I'm thinking, and you're on my board, you're trying to, you're supposed to connect with my faith in agreement, <laughs> you know, and once they saw how we live by faith, they, that's what came out their mouth. Boy, I guess you guys do live by faith. <laughs> and and uh, we did, boy. And, uh, and we grew and we knew, we, we, we proved God's word. And, and once you, you can have confidence in the word and in your faith uh, to a point where you just say it and live it and people see it and it's a testimony and give glory to God. It's not about us being high and lifted up. It's about him being high and lifted up. And when people see your body's healed, miracles, financial miracles, breakthroughs, and, and, and you've been acting as though it's done, and they think you're crazy, but in the end results, God becomes high and lifted up. He gets all the glory. And, and, then, and then, you know, we become trophies. Amen. Praise God uh, to point to God, to point to His goodness, to point to His power and His uh, compassion. Amen. That's a good word, compassion for our lives. And they can live under the same umbrella of compassion and love and ability and power of God in their life. Amen. Well, I pray you were helped. And uh, we just want you to know we love you. Thanks for tuning in today. Tune in to the next broadcast. And uh, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be good and quiet because it's the Word of God. And the Word of God is life changing. Amen. Well, we love you. Call you blessed. Until next time.